All right, welcome back to another unboxing with Learn. Um, I've been on this trip of these screen-free robotics here for a little bit, and I am bringing you a pretty cool one today. Mata Lab coding set. All right, so this is for four up. Um, you know, any subject area, you could play around with this. Uh, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to open it up and we're going to look at all the parts and I'll show you kind of how it works. It's a pretty cool little robot. So here we go. So inside, once you pop it open, um, obviously we have our documentation, which we'll look at first. So it's kind of a quick start guide. You have your instruction booklet, which I'll show you so we don't need to go through that. And plus, they offer these kind of challenge booklets for the students. And there's three different um, difficulty levels, I guess. So if we just kind of open one up, um, this mat is provided on the inside. And it goes kind of on the left page, you have the block to use, and then the little challenge where it's supposed to go. And then it gets progressively harder. They put a return in, two forward blocks, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it's just a way to kind of get the kids started where they won't need um, your full attention. They'll be able to kind of do this on their own with the help of these booklets, or they'll just do free play with it. I mean, it's great for free play as well. So we'll look at the components of it, and here are the three main components. So first off, I have my robot, right? This will do all the motion. Um, and this is just magnetic. It pops on and off pretty easily. In the back, I have my power switch my charge uh, input, and it has a little speaker underneath and obviously it has its two wheels, right? So there's your little robot. A cute thing about this is you can personalize it as well. So if I pop it off underneath here, let me get this off. You'll see that it's a Lego um, kind of board here on the top. So you can add your own personalized Lego figures if you want, and they just kind of sit there on top. You push them in. Okay, so very Lego compatible. If you have Lego, this is a great kind of robot to bring in with Lego. Just put this little cap back on. Okay, so there's our robot. Now, this part right here is, I like to call it the lighthouse. And basically, it will read the code that the students place on this board and then send it over to the robot. All right, so this is kind of our observer, and this is the little robot that does the action. And again, you have to charge this. It has a speaker, turns on, plugs in, all right? And this attaches to the board itself. So let's pull the board out, and I'm going to move this box over for one minute just to show you how it sets up. So I just put it on a table. Um, table is probably safer because um, it will fit right on um, having it on the ground might be a little bit more precarious. I take my lighthouse and I just put it, stick it right on top there. I have my big play button. And then beside, oop, you forgot this little hat over here. Here's my robot. Okay, so I would create my code with the tiles, which I'm going to show you. The lighthouse reads it and then sends a command to the robot once I've hit this play button. Okay, and you can see it's a very big play button. So let's actually look at creating a piece of code here. Move this over slightly. Robot, you'll stay there for a second. So in the rest of the box here, if I open it up, here's that mat I was telling you about. It folds out. It's got, um, it's a four by four. So you have 16 different squares. And this theme is a lot of like, it places, uh, volcanoes, islands, mountains, etc. And then you have a wordless one here as well, which kind of has like markers. So if your kids are just kind of at, you know, the pictorial stage, um, this is a great starter map. The Forest Park Tour. All right. This is what they call this one. All right, so I'm just going to fold it up just so that I have a little bit more space. Now, inside is where my blocks are. Now, it comes with a great charger, and it has two plugs, so I can charge both components at the same time, the robot and also the lighthouse if I need to. Okay, so that comes with it. And then inside, I have all these cool blocks, all right? And they're broken into kind of two sections. These are my function blocks, and these might be kind of in your higher level, right? Now, a function is a series of these blocks, directional blocks put together, 
and it acts as one block, right? So I could put, let's do a little example here. I'll get a couple of turning ones, and I'm going to take a function one, right? So on my board, I put my robot on the side. If I want to do a function, and again, I wouldn't start necessarily with this. I could create a function, which is a series of commands that the robot will then do. So here's my function command, which means now I can I only need to put a function here, and this will do exactly what this is. All right. So instead of putting all these, I just have to put a function key because the robot, the lighthouse knows what this sequence is. So we're not going to get into that. Like I said, those are something that you'll get a little bit more into the third booklet, which I'll show you. But the fun, the tiles where they're moving are really fun. All right. And I'm going to pull a couple of them out to just show you a couple of the differences. And I'm going to pull this one out too. And I'm going to show you these two as well, because these are fun. Right. So you have a couple of different blocks here. So direction, like I said, the purple ones are kind of like songs and dances for celebrating kind of after the code is over or just for the students to play with like that. I have a green one, which is a loop one, which I can get the robot to do something over and over again. And then I also have these numbers, right? So say, for example, I wanted the robot to go um, like this. Let's move this over here just so you can see it a little bit better. So say I wanted the robot to do two down motions. Instead of right doing two in a row, I could take that block off and I can put a number underneath. I put three, but there's a two. I just can't find it. <laughs> so again, the robot, the lighthouse will read that you want to go down three times and it will just do that. So it's a way of shortening your code and also debugging as the kids get more used to playing with these. Now, let's just put a piece of code together so you have an idea of what it can do. Now, I'm not going to do a very big one because my space is limited. So I'm just going to toss this over a little bit so you can see. And oh, one other thing I wanted to show you in the box is it comes with this other box, <laughs> a box in a box. And these are kind of like cool little things that you can put on the map to kind of like as barriers or start here and then end here. All right. So they're just kind of like little fun things that the kids can play around with. Plus, you have these barriers, right, so that they you can kind of have two students playing at this and challenging one another. So say, for example, OK, I don't want it to go up. I want it to go this way. And it's going to start here at the glacier. And I want it to end, let's just keep it simple, at the island. All right. So I need it to go, make sure that it's going left. It needs to go forward one. Then it needs to turn right, go forward one. Okay. So I can kind of look at my map and let's kind of make this happen. This is tough. So I, <laughs> I'm going to have it start here. So I'm going to point it in that direction. So the first thing I want it to do is. Actually, I need a forward, which is this. Okay, so it's going to go forward. I can tell from my arrow. Again, if I take this off, you can see that direction. So I want it to go forward. Then it needs to take a left turn. And then I want it to go forward again. Let me just grab another forward one. And then it needs to turn the other direction. Now, let's see if it works. So let me fire this on. So I'm going to just press this button. And you can see the light. And it makes a little tune. I'm going to take off the lighthouse and turn it on. You'll see that the light turns on in the front. And I'm going to place it back. It'll acknowledge once it's connected. There you go. So let's practice my code, all right? Now remember, when you're coding, you're, you're there to make mistakes, right? You're trying to figure things out. So I hope that this code works for what I have asked it to do. I'm gonna hit the play button, receives the code. Oh, look, it turned the wrong way, all right? So 
I know that this turn is wrong, right? So I'm going to go place it back. And instead of that direction, I need to move it to this direction. Okay. And then I'll just put that one there because I think that should work. So again, I've debugged. I hit play again. It sends, turns the right direction, goes forward. And oh, it turned the wrong direction again. So I'm going to have to go and get another one of those turns like this. Okay, and let's try it one more time. This is what coding's all about, trial and error. So there it goes forward, it will turn, goes forward, and it's ready for its next turn. Perfect. Now, we can add a little bit of fun for this as well. So let's have a celebration at the end. And let's see how this one works. So it should do exactly what I said, because I didn't change any of this. But I just added a little celebration so we have an idea of what it will do. So again, it turns, it goes forward, and it's turning ready. And there's its little celebration. And its little eyes even light up, which is really cool. So you can see it's pretty easy for the kids to get started on this. And I just let them play. Just to remember that it's like a book. You're going from left to right when you're coding. That's how the lighthouse reads the code from left to right. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and stay tuned 